Hey everyone, Jordan here. Every now and again, I'll get a message about, do I want to look at something really crazy? And of course, the answer is always yes. More specifically, this is the AMD Threadripper 9960X. Now, this was kindly sent over by the guys at Scan Computers UK. If you're not familiar with them, they have a humongous range of products. Anything from PC components to pro audio and video gear, even some musical instruments pre-built systems. I'll link them down below. A big thank you to them guys for sending out this and all the other things necessary for us to show this off. Now today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video, what you'd usually expect for something like this. We're going to see if we can game on a Threadripper processor. Now let me get this out of the box and we'll tell you about some more of the specs. Now at the time of filming this is currently £1,399, an eye-watering amount of money. However, if you are looking to use a PC as a creative you know, basis, for your work or anything like that then this is something you'll likely be looking at as threadripper offers expandability and also reliability especially with the ardim um, memory that it uses it's a lot more reliable than standard stuff especially being server grade so obviously that's an essential thing if you do rely on your using your pc as a job full time so of course we have got the processor first and foremost out of the box in a nice little plastic casing it's very heavy it's the first time i think i've actually held one of these and that's a lot heavier than i was expecting so we've of course got that we've got a little bit of information there's also a little sticker too for threadripper and on the back we're going to find the str5 mount this is for an acetec unit so you can swap a pre-existing acetec one over and then use it on that I do have, of course, the Noctua cooler to the side of me here that Scan have kindly sent as well to use for this testing. And then we have got the Threadripper Torx. This does require a specific amount of force on it, and this will stop when you get to that force as well, so you're not going to over-wrench and over-tighten down the socket on it. So the 9960X is built on the Zen 5 architecture. That's the TSMC 4 nanometer process. 24 core, 48 thread processor got a base clock of 4.2 gigahertz with a maximum boost of up to 5.4 it's also got 128 megabytes of level 3 cache like the x3d processors however it does work a little bit differently and i'll go over that more later on in this one we're going to be investigating if the threadripper is a good gaming processor now of course you wouldn't buy this just for gaming that's stupid um, but if you need something that's heavy in terms of you know core clock threads processors and stuff like that and you do a lot of editing video work this would of course rip through 8k video footage then it could be something great to get for daily workflow and then a bit of gaming in the night or the evening twice the price of the x3d processor the 9950x3d but like i mentioned the reliability aspect is important if we we're going to be using this for work so that's where this comes into play we've also got the ardim memory here this is corsair the boards can support up to 6400 as a maximum but this kit here is going to be 6000 for 16 gig stick so a total of 64 the boards themselves can support up to around a terabyte of storage so if you are going to put this in for example a server you can put a lot more memory in of course the higher boards you go the more capacity of dim slots it has there as well now the other thing with these thread for processes is a whopping 92 pci lanes now your normal system you will have around 24 and this with its 92 which is realistically about 80 because the board takes up a few for io and the system is on another level of course so you'll have typically on a normal system you'll have your graphics card a couple of storage items and then you're going to have your bandwidth start to half on certain extra lanes or pci slots well of course on something like this that's not a problem so this is the definite best of both worlds if you are doing a lot of heavy workflow creative stuff video editing 6k footage 8k footage you could just literally as in the name rip through that or something like this but then you fancy a bit of gaming in the evening could be a good option now we'll be doing a second video on this thread ripper going over the usual stuff you'd expect to see creativity and like workflow i'm going to try and davinci resolve my editing suite and then we'll do the usual benchmarks and things like that geekbench and blender render tests and things like that but it's very rare I get to play with something this high end and this crazy. So I thought for the first video, why not see if we can game on it? So I'm now gonna get this all assembled. I talked to you about the parts I'm gonna be using at the end, run it through the suite and see if it's a good choice for a little bit of evening gaming. 
So I now put this through its paces and I have some interesting results for you all. Now before we go over those, I'll just list off the system for those that are interested. Of course we have the 9960X and the Asus Pro WS TRX50 Sage Wi-Fi board. There's the Noctua NHU14S TR5-SP6 cooler with 64GB of 6000 mega transfers Corsair WS DDR5 RDIM memory. Glass a mouthful. Then for storage, we'll need a new drive, being a new chipset and things like that. So we've got the IG740 Pro from Orico in this system. We've also got the Asus 1490 TUF graphics card, and it's all powered by the Corsair HX1500i. Now, when I test CPUs, I do this at 1080p. You might think that's a little bit of a low resolution with a 4090 on that system, but this is just to make things easier in the graphs, and you can see how much faster the CPU is. So at 4K, for example, the CPU is basically identical. And then at 1080p, you'll see like a 329 FPS chip versus a 316, which is obviously day and night on the graph, and you can tell them apart easier. If you do want any more info on how that testing methodology works, Hardware Unboxed have got a dedicated video on the channel. Really good watch as well. So I'll rattle through the graphs and put them on the screen for you to see. When it comes to gaming, the Threadripper 9960X generally sits towards the lower end of the charts compared to the mainstream and the X3D chips. Average train rates of 1% lows are consistently playable, but as you can see, it isn't tuned to chase the absolute top numbers. That being said, it did edge out a couple of the Intel processors in certain runs, which shows it's far from incapable. That's also the surprising bit, even though it's built for workflow and productivity tasks, it still keeps up well enough that if you fancy jumping in a bit of gaming in your downtime, then it will handle it just fine. Now onto the level three cache that I mentioned earlier. So when you look at the spec sheets, the Threadripper 9960X that we have here, and also the 9950X3D, both advertise 128 megabytes of level three cache, but the way that it works is just completely different on each chip. For Threadripper, that cache is spread around across multiple CCDs, which gives you massive bandwidth for the heavy workstation task, especially editing, blender and rendering and that kind of thing. But it does introduce a little bit more latency when you do jump from task to task. However, when you have the 9950X3D, that 3D cache is stacked directly on top of a single CCD, which just gives ultra low latency, which makes it obviously perfect for gaming. That's why you'll see in the gaming benchmarks the X3D pulls ahead, but when we'll do our other content on the creative side, you'll see that the Threadripper just destroys those X3D chips. So can you game on Threadripper? Absolutely, it will run modern titles just fine, but it's not designed to be the ultimate gaming CPU. If your day is filled with creative workflows and you just want to kick back at the end of the day with some games, then Threadripper does make a lot of sense, especially if you do a lot of file storage and need a lot of raw files like video or photography, for example, then having a lot of extra lanes for Threadripper could be very useful if you need to add in cards for storage like this. So if there's anything else you'd like to know, then please do leave a comment. I'm also planning to do a build alongside the video next week so we can revisit anything specific you'd like to see there. I'll also leave the links to Scan and the products that they've sent in the video description. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a little bit different. Please get subscribed and ding the bell if you haven't already so you don't miss next week's video, of course, as well as the build when that comes up very soon. Next week, we're going to be testing the raw core and thread power and some productivity and benchmarks. Maybe I'll put it up against my daily system of 7600X and see just how many times it destroys it. Thank you to Scan for sending out the products that you've seen today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.